welcome to the standing uh, section of our workout. We are doing a few standing exercises just in case there's anybody um, in the autoimmune community that is not comfortable sitting or uh, wants to particularly work on balance because standing work uh, exercises are particularly good for working balance. So um, we are going to start with our single leg circle which we also did on the mat but we'll do it standing now. So you want to stand with your feet to together with your heels together, but toes a little bit apart. So that you have, meantime you're standing in that way, um, turned out slightly or, or more than slightly, you'll have a little bit better balance because your base of support is wider. So from that position, let's pick the right leg up first and just have it come out in front of you, maybe six inches or a foot off of the mat. And we'll cross it again over the standing leg knee, down around and then lift it to the top. So keeping turned out the whole time, we're again strengthening the muscles on the inside of the knee, which is particularly good for anyone who has knee instability. So you can go the other direction, going down and then across and up, and try and keep that sense of lengthening out through the top of your head as if someone's pulling you to the ceiling by a string. And of course you can challenge us more by going higher with your leg at any point. So you can also go smaller and uh, have that be a modification as well. So letting the left leg come out to, in front, try to keep the hips square with one another still and grow really tall. We'll bring the leg down across and up to the top. And even here using the breath will be helpful for balance. So inhaling as you go down, exhaling as you lift the leg is helpful. And then we'll reverse going across, down, around and up to the top. Good, trying to keep your weight on that standing leg as close to center as possible, just like when we're on the mat. And then from there, we'll bring both legs back together. So the roll up that we did on the mat, we can also do in a standing position, either with your hands behind your head, or Katie, you could do it with your arms just at your side so that people can see that variation. And just imagine that you're growing really tall and then you're like a piece of tape being pulled off of a wall. You're just gonna peel off of that wall, rounding through each section of your spine so that your spine and the little intervertebral muscles in between your vertebrae get a stretch. And then when you get to what feels like a good stretch, you can pause there. It doesn't have to be as far down as you can go, but just pause there for a moment and then start rolling back up. Lower back, middle back, upper back, and last your head. And I'll demonstrate what this looks like with a prop with a ball as well. We'll do one more. So you can uh, just take your arms out front. Yeah, you could do another way, Katie. And just, again, keep your sternum always in line with your um, ball, with your arms, if you have your arms out in front of you. And then just let your head go at the, at the bottom so that you get a little neck release and make sure you're not holding neck tension and then you'll roll back up, letting your pelvis tuck, coming all the way back to the point where your shoulders are just slightly in front of your hips. And um, this brings us to a discussion of standing posture. Um, often in Pilates we talk about leaning into the wind, and that is this idea of leaning forward very slightly not so much that you couldn't pick your toes up off of the floor. You still want to be able to lift your toes um, so you're not jamming your toes down into the floor, but leaning forward enough that you just feel your abs have to work. And it's not letting your back arch and leaning forward from your hips, but it's letting your whole body just pull forward slightly. And it might feel a little precarious, but you'll notice that you have to pull up with your lower abdominals when you're in that position. You'll probably fall trying to find it, because I right. always do it. Yeah, that's... Exactly right. Like you, you, if you can find that place where you're going to fall, that's that's where you should start, um, because that's the feeling you want to not have that you're falling, but <laughs> that you want to have so that you can maintain that that lower abdominal engagement, especially when you're doing standing work. So we're going to take the arms out to the sides. Do you want to, yeah, face forward, Katie, to do our standing saw, and we'll step the feet apart so they're about shoulder width or even wider apart. Have your arms slightly forward of your shoulders. And then we'll rotate the body and take the hand that's from the opposite side to the outside of your foot. So the, the same side arm is going to be reaching up toward the ceiling. And it's like your arms are being pulled apart. And then you'll come back up through center. Keep the feeling of your hips facing forward. 
even as you twist to the other side. And they may not stay perfectly forward, but try and keep as much of that feeling as you can. The back arm reaches up toward the ceiling as your head drops, like you're listening to something your knee has to say. Then come back up. Good. And the whole time we're having a tiny bit of feeling of leaning into the wind so that we really feel that abdominal engagement. As we reach to the other side, let the head go and come back up, still rotated, and then come back through center. Last one, rotating just the upper body, letting that back arm internally rotate to reach the fingers up toward the ceiling, and then come back up through center and bring your arms and your legs back to your center. So we're also going to do a little um, arm work because that's been so far lacking in most of our work that we've done. So you can do push-ups um, in Pilates, the full form, we just do them on the mat as you would normally do a push-up, but building up to the point where you can do those, you can do them on a wall to start, um, or you could do them on a surface that's a little bit like a high countertop, a little bit raised from the floor, so that you're, it's not quite as challenging as going from the floor. So Katie's going to demonstrate on our ladder barrel here, and I'll demonstrate what these look like on the wall or a, a windowsill. And you'll still want to probably have your feet heels touching, um, although they can be done with the feet wide as well. I like to always have the heels touching when I can. So we'll bend the elbows and just stay in a straight line, press out from the wall or the countertop or whatever you're leaning against, and come back in. So the important part here is that, again, you're not arching your back. She's coming in with the ribs pulling in, just like when we were doing the standing uh, lean, she wasn't letting the ribs go out here and she isn't letting them ha that happen in this plank position either. Good. So the lower the surface you can rest, <laughs> the lower the surface that you're practicing those on, the more challenging it will be. You can also do it on a box um, on the floor or a coffee table. So as you lower the surface, those will get more and more challenging finishing with um, push-ups just on the floor. Um, one last thing I wanted to point out is for people who do have knee instability and want to work on their balance and improving that. And the single leg circle is really great that we started with, but you can also do just, you can mirror me if you want Katie or yeah, face yeah. forward and do these. I call these the uh, knee strengthening series with tapping the heel of the free leg on the floor. And I do about 10 to the front, so you'll, you'll stay turned out. And then we'll go to the side and do about 10 to the side. And the important thing is that it's not about how high the leg is going, it's about getting the, the standing leg to be stabilizing so that you're not rocking around and moving on that standing leg. And then we'll go to the back for about 10. This is also where you would remind me not to lock my standing knee, which yes. I yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, so the standing leg will often just, in order to have more stability, will push back to the point where it's locked. So just make sure that you're not doing that and we'll switch sides. So soften the standing leg and then straightening one leg out front, just turned out, do little taps. And at the same time, grow really tall out through the top of the head. I don't think we did a full 10 on the other side, but. And then you'll go out to the side. And the tendency here to the side is to lean toward the standing leg, so make sure that you're just still using that idea of the string being pulled out from the top of your head. And then we'll go to the back and make sure you're keeping the feeling of the ribs pulling up and in. And all of these, of course, work the balance a lot as well. So even just a daily practice of a minute or two, or 30 seconds in the beginning, really, of just trying to stand on one leg and see what that looks like can be really helpful for improving balance over time. Um, so we'll finish with one last roll down. So you can choose your arm position. I'm going to do straight arms overhead. And just like you're standing against a wall, you can actually do these standing against the wall. Do you want to do that, Katie? Yeah. We'll show what that looks like, actually since we haven't done that yet. So walk your feet. If you're going to do it actually standing against a wall, you want to have your feet off of the wall because otherwise your back won't be able to touch the wall because of that natural lumbar curve that we all have. So when her feet are far enough away, I would go a little further out. I usually measure about one of my foot lengths away from the wall. 
then that's usually about right. But you might want to walk further out if your back isn't touching the mat yet, or the, the wall yet. Um, and then let your arms just hang, because it's going to be work for your arms to push all the way back to the wall, and we don't want to get that work up in the neck. So yeah, let the arms hang and concentrate instead on really using your abdominal muscles to pull back to the wall. So when I'm putting my hand behind her lower back, I can really feel the strength of her core because she's squeezing my hand. So from there, she's going to peel off the wall like a piece of tape, just letting her head go first and her eyes naturally follow and then her upper back slow down a little bit so that I can see each part of her spine. You can keep going now, just go slower. Um, I want her to go slower so that she can actually feel each section of her spine slowly articulating off of the mat. And then just let your arms dangle there. And you can shake your head no. It's always good to practice saying no, even when you're doing Pilates. And then you'll roll your tail back up. And softly bending the knees is not a bad idea here because anybody who has a larger lumbar curve is going to have to go really slowly through this section. And bending the knees helps to get it to actually touch the wall. And having that feeling of, oh, that's what it feels like when it touches the wall will just help you all the way through all of the exercises that we've been doing. So bringing your arms out front is the way to do the ultimate challenge here. This would be like the level three of this exercise, which I know Katie's capable of, so I'm gonna have her do it here. But you could also use your arms against the wall to push off. Um, and the, the feet can also be an option. So if you wanna do sort of in between, level one and level three. So the right foot will take back to the wall first, Katie, and try to not shift your body to the left when you pick up the right foot as much as possible. Just try and set that foot on the wall. And like a zombie, you're just gonna boom, pull yourself off to the wall. Good, staying straight like a board, because if she folds at the hips, then we know she's not just using her core muscles to pull her off. So now you can do that with the other leg too if you wanna end up not walking in circles all day. So. Um, have the feeling of still pulling back. This is not our normal standing posture. I want to emphasize that, that when we're in this position against the wall, we're tucked. We're not in a neutral pelvis, and I don't advocate staying like that all day. I do think that people should untuck and go back to their natural standing posture, but just for this exercise so that we can really feel that deep scoop, we're tucked, and then we push the foot into the wall and come off, and then you can let your arms go and remain lifted and lengthened throughout the rest of your day and thanks for joining us for this Pilates sort of introduction and um, feel free to visit the website for more information pdxpilates.com thank you